funny thing about Yosemite that I, I try not to mention, my camera stopped working because I didn't know what I was doing with it. And I kind of <laughs> tinkered around with it too much. So this session is more for you guys to learn about how to take a great photo um, and then not only take that great photo, but how do you take that into your, your PC and, uh, you know, manipulate it to really highlight some of the things that you want to really showcase and, you know, sort of doing it like the professionals do, even though we're not professionals, but it's going to give you a little bit of an insight on, uh, on how to kind of work with those images. So uh, I actually picked up a camera. Um, it was a Fujifilm camera a while back ago. I used to work in one yep. of uh, our retail partners. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was actually going to head out to uh, San Francisco and uh, just with a couple of friends. And uh, at one point, they were like, hey, we should go to Yosemite. So we planned to go to Yosemite. And I, uh, I, I had bought this camera just for Yosemite. And uh, I, at that point, I was just like in love with photography. But uh, I couldn't really get um, the gist of it. Like, I, I really wasn't um meshing well with it and that's because i didn't know the fundamentals now that's something we're going to kind of cover uh cover on today like we're going to go over some of the things that you would need um so if you're if you're talking about either using say a camera like the one that i have or even your smartphone you'll be able to use one of those uh, tools to actually um, work and uh you know take great photos so we'll also talk about the techniques, the tools, and some of the, the, the structures behind taking a great photo. In terms of talking about shooting a great fit photo, like how, how would you know something is actually a great photo? How do you kind of figure that out? Uh, taking a great photo has three, three parts other than the creative side, and that's the actual aperture of the photo. So ooh, how big was uh, the opening of the lens that you're using? The shutter speed, so how fast is the, the image being captured? So in general terms, you can think of it like a current. How fast does a current open and close? Yeah. Um, and then you have something called ISO, which is uh, uh, light sensitivity on your sensor. Now, the nice thing is, is that, uh, say your smartphone that I have right here, um, yeah. you can do the exact same thing because you do have what are called pro modes. Um, and with that, you can actually manipulate all of those things. You just have to understand what they are, right? Uh, so first, focus on what you're trying to capture. Use that creative side of yourself. And then focus on um, uh, the actual techniques that you need to master in order to take uh, the, a great photo, right? So uh, I would recommend, regardless, whatever tool you're using, whether it's a smartphone, a camera, or it's something beyond that, um, master the tool itself before you go out and buy, say, a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar camera, right? So let's talk a little bit about your workflow now, right? Like, how do you um, actually uh, get set up when it comes to, um, you know, the process or procedure of once you've taken some photos and you're working on Windows and stuff? Uh, let's uh, let's go through some of that now. Uh, so I'm lucky. I actually have a Surface Book Two. This is the device that I use for my photography. The reason I use my Surface, the, there's a few points. Um, the screen itself is uh, color accurate, so I have it set to sRGB, so I can get the best colors um, and the most accurate colors, because when you're dealing with photos, you really want um, a true picture or a true image of your picture, let's say. Um, and then the other side of it is, is with the, the Surface line in general, um, the Surface Pen. So. I don't have a what's called a Wacom tablet or say um, a creative tablet. Um, and that's because uh, I'm moving around a lot. I don't really have the moment to, you know, pick up a, a computer and then pick up a tablet on top of that, let alone have my camera in my bag and everything else. So this just gives me literally my device. That's all I need um, with my Surface Pen. And then occasionally, like, I'll use a mouse that I have off to the side. Um, I'm very uh, particular when it comes down to my workflow, so I'd rather do something the, the best way and the fastest, easiest way than really try to use, say, just keyboard shortcuts. So I'll use my trackpad, my mouse, and my pen simultaneously. And so that's uh, the surface. 
could not agree with you more. When it comes to Surface devices, you are getting an amazing display, especially with that Pixel Sense technology there. You know, even if you're taking notes and, you know, we've done a few sessions actually on getting organized and stuff. So there's so many other advantages to Surface as well. But it's great to hear that if you're looking to getting into photos and stuff, yeah, the the, the color accuracy on the screen on the Surface device is really going to go a, a lot further in, in that in that case, right? Um, so moving on from there. So let's uh, let's talk about... Um, you know, you, you got your Surface device or the device that you're going to be using to work with these photos. How do you actually work at getting those photos now from your camera uh, and on your phone directly over to your device, essentially? So there's two parts. Um, uh, for my mirrorless camera, I actually use SD card and just drop it into my SD card reader in my book, too, which is, you know, when it comes down to it with a camera like that, that's really the only way to do it. Um, but from my smartphone, I use OneDrive. So my photos from my uh, my phone is automatically backed up. I don't have to worry about it, um, which is kind of funny because uh, you might switch through phones. You might drop your phone. You still always have access to it as long as it's backed up. Um, and I care about photos, so I'll give up some of my data use to make sure that my photos are always backed up because they're important to me. Um, but some people maybe just want Wi-Fi, but you have that option, which is great. Um, so those are the two parts. And if you don't mind, I can show you my desktop and just, yeah, hundred percent. Let's go for it. Let's see it. So generally what I do is I'll take my photos, whether it's from OneDrive or SD card, I'll move it into a folder on my desktop and I'll take that folder and I'll actually cut it and I will organize it. So I will take my raw files. And in this case, we'll talk a little bit more about raw files and everything in between and JPEGs and the differences. Yep. But I, I take my photos and I will actually, and I think I already have my folder structure. So you'll see here that I have a folder structure already created and I'll just paste my photos in here. And these are the raw photos at the end of the day. Um, and you'll see that it automatically uploads and I'm good to go. Like the image itself, I think a raw file is like size wise, it's, it's a lot larger as well, right? So if yeah. uh, I guess if you're storing it, all of them on your desktop, it's probably going to be taking up a lot of room. And I think that's where the OneDrive really stands out because if you can automatically back it up, uh, back it up and, and with Office 365, you're getting one terabyte of storage. You got a lot of room to work with at that point. Yeah, so generally what happens is I, I will fill up my device because I'm taking the uh, the most, the largest raw, raw files, so the most amount of data. Um, raw files are essentially you're using the sensor to capture everything and as much as you can, whereas JPEGs are already processed images. And what that means is the computer is doing some of the work, whether it's in a camera or a smartphone. Uh, to create a JPEG, the computer does a bunch of the work to get it to a point where you feel that you're pleased with the image. So different smartphones have different image details and stuff like that. Um, a raw file kind of takes all that away and allows you to be the computer at the end of it. So I'm going to show you guys Lightroom. Now, if you haven't seen Lightroom before, it's a little out there. Um, beautiful software, does a lot. It's actually made by Adobe. They're, uh, they're a great partner. And uh, when it comes down to it, they've done some amazing stuff for the creative community. Um, these are just photos from the past that I've taken. So this was uh, this was just me playing around with my Sony. I got it not too long ago. Um, I was a Fuji shooter. Now I'm a, a Sony shooter. Um, love both. You know, I'm a tech guy at heart. But um, there's the other side of taking an image, a gray image, let's say. Um, you can't just take a black image and expect it to capture every detail that you'd want. Um, that being said, Lightroom does a great job of telling you what settings you had. Um, so before we talked about it, where we were talking about shutter speed, we were also talking about ISO and aperture. Um, in this case, Lightroom will actually tell you what you are using. And in, in your camera settings, even in your smartphone, it will tell you what your settings are. So in this case, you'll see that my ISO is set to 400. Um, generally, you want to keep that uh, low. Uh, 400 is, I would consider, high for the image itself, just because there was a fair amount of light. But like I said, I was playing around with this camera. Um, the the millimeters are actually just the the full or the the camera lens, and then the f stop or uh, the aperture number is actually the the amount of light that's being let in by the uh, the lens onto the sensor. 
and then you'll see one over 60 and then seconds and that's one over 60 is the how fast the, the shutter speed opens and closes so in this case if i could change one thing it'd probably be the iso but uh, at 400 it's not going to be concerning uh, a concerning detail especially if this is not going into a magazine okay let's edit this photo right it's a yep. a photo of chantilly she is like i said a puppy still fairly large um, I, I like to start with um, exposure. Do I like the way the, the photo looks? And you look, you'll see that I turn down the exposure all the way, right? And that's like, you can't see anything. It's obviously not the best image, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good image, but you can also crank it all the way. And, and because she's a, uh, a white dog, um, she ends up being what's called overexposed. So essentially, if you ever took a photo of say the sun directly, you end up getting yeah. overexposure. And what happens is those areas that are over, uh, let's say over whitened or over brightened, um, you can't recover that data. So, and if you're too dark, you can't recover that data. Yeah. So essentially you would want to be in the middle and you'll see here, this is, this is a histogram. It's actually moving left and right. Um, now these settings, they're, they're tied in, they're, they're locked in, you can't change them. But what we, you can do is change the points that they, they rest on. So, for example, um, you can take exposure and maybe bring it up just a, li a little bit, right? Now the image looks like it's yeah, it actually It does look a lot. Yeah, it looks like it, you know, it really stands out a little bit more. And then the other thing you really want to start with is your, your temperature. So you go outside right now. It's probably – it's sunny. It's closer to the summer. So you're going to have more of a, a gold – overcast or a yellow overcast but during the winter it's cooler you might have more of a winter day so um the overcast kind of gives you more of a blue tone right yeah uh, so you can you can play around with this you can take a winter image and switch make it into a summer image and vice versa now uh, one thing that i will say is that a lot of people will throw on presets and filters right from the get-go um, take the time to understand what you're trying to convey with that image, right? So, the, and that's the big thing about, say, any photography, whether it's food or uh, wedding or portraits, you want to understand what you're trying to capture at the end of the day, because you can always fix what you're trying to convey later on, right? The contrast kind of punches up all of your colors. Now, photography and image taking in general uh, really depends on uh, colors and uh, what you see. So in this case, contrast, if you crank it all the way up, will uh, make your line, say, in your wood grain a lot sharper, um, but it also increase the color between colors. Uh, that's the best way to explain it. Um, yeah. Generally, I try to keep contrast levels um, within the middle because as soon as you go one way or the other, you're going to have two extreme images, right? So what we're going to do next is, because uh, I know, you know, Niv just kind of showed us Adobe Lightroom. I did want to showcase, how can you get started on this? If, without you having to get that Adobe subscription, how can you get started on editing out a lot of these images and, and working away? Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk to you a little bit about Windows Photos uh, and what the Photos apps is actually capable of, uh, of uh, what you're able to do. So, so let's say we are working with the same photo Niv was doing. The great thing about Windows Photos is it does give you a lot of those controls that you would want to work with uh, that some of the high-end programs provide. But in some sense, um, not as many of those controls, but you could be able to go in there and still work with a, a, a photo and, and uh, get, do a lot of the things that Niv discussed a little bit earlier. So for example, um, we talked about straightening an image. So when we are editing a, a, an image in Windows Photos, uh, in the crop and rotate section, you have that availability to go ahead and start cropping. And I see that those same rule, you know, what did you call it? The rule of nines or? Rule of thirds. Rule of thirds. There you go. Rule of thirds. So I can see those same type of, um, you know, grid lines are showing up to get like a better image if you wanted to mess with the rule of thirds a little bit. Uh, so next, where are all those filters and stuff? So the cool thing is just at the top here, we got filters and in, in photos here uh, that will showcase some of the filters that are available to us to enhance those photos. A lot of these, though, because the picture is very, very pink, I am seeing a lot of them really, really standing out very pink. But that's where we can go to the next tab, which is adjustments right across the top. And we can start messing with some of these things. So uh, we have the light level. So if we're darkening it or brightening it up a bit, uh, I and think that this is the one with your uh, your exposure level. So if you uh, 
increase the light to 100%, you're going to increase the exposure across across the image. And the color would be your saturation at that point. And if you actually hit the arrow next to light or color, um, it'll actually give you a drop down menu to give you further uh, capabilities. So you'll see exposures there, contrast is there. So Windows making your life a little bit easier. Um, do we want to just reduce the light overall, or do we just want to go in and fix, say, the contrast is too high or the exposure is too high? So, uh, yeah, powerful tool right there.